Today on Nation, we're going to be talking about the top five big moves that you can make, or maybe you're leaning towards or whatever, but how are you playing for them? How do you make them happen? Either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's going on everybody? Jersey here from WCRWindowCleaner.com and you're here. Thanks for visiting us. This is WCR Nation. It's a window cleaning podcast, but it's really a small business or service business podcast. We have well over 100 episodes, so go back, check it out. Hopefully you enjoy it. Make sure to thumbs up if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're on any of the podcast platforms, please do uh, subscribe to those so you get the new one every single week. And it shows us uh, good looking numbers. So I always appreciate that. If you are one of the cool kids, if you are one of the elites, one of the nation, somebody who watches, listens, thumbs ups, reviews, I don't know what words I'm using, uh, and most importantly, you buy your supplies through me, window cleaning, pressure washing, whatever supplies, you get them through me at windowcleaner.com. Thank you so much for that. It is truly, truly a pleasure. You guys have really just gotten amazing with uh, how many of you are just absolutely loyal to buying through me, and I totally, totally, totally dig it. It's absolutely amazing. It's it's absolutely wonderful. But if you want to buy your supplies through me, it is as simple as throwing it all in your cart. Shoot me a text. Be like, yo, Jersey, stuff's in my cart. Let's do this. And that's it. I get to get a little cheddar for it. Costs you nothing extra. I put it in, and most importantly, you got a guy. It's always nice to have a rep, right? Like your personal rep for any questions, anything like that. If you want to do that, please do. 862-312-2026. That's my cell. Shoot me a text when it's in your cart. Shoot me a text with questions. Just text me and say, what's up? I like the show. I hate the show. Your nose is crooked. Whatever. Uh, and I very much appreciate it. Uh, but I do want to be a rep, so please let me know on that. And also, if you guys are having like bidding questions or you just have questions on anything, my email is jersey at windowcleaner.com. Shoot any questions uh, via email if you are sending pictures. I can't get them via text. Send it to me uh, through email, and I'll get back to you on that too. Whew. Anyway, speaking of some of the cool kids, some of the most awesome and elite people, uh, Mike Nichols. What's up, man? Uh, you are absolutely phenomenally awesome. Uh, still one of my favorite videos uh, ever on the internet from him. And I don't know why, but it is. Uh, Neko Wink. Nico Wink. Sorry. Sorry. Nico Wink. What's up? Uh, I probably butchered your name, and I'm so sorry. Uh, Keith Hayes. What is up, man? Uh, by the way, one of the cool kids, uh, Keith Hayes. For sure. And uh, Dan Campbell. What's going on, man? Uh, thank you guys. There's so many of you too that, uh, I try to give shout outs and I try not to go crazy. I'd have to give a hundred shout outs every single week. So I try, uh, just pick some random ones, but man, uh, thank you very, very much. If you guys are buying through me, I'm going to try to give you a shout out. So, uh, if you buy, let me know what kind of name brand stuff. The last one was name brand fireworks. Uh, I've had name brand hot dogs and name brand pasta. It's just kind of the running joke. It's super awesome. Either way. Thank you for that. But this week, we're going to be talking about the top five big moves. Now, everybody is in a different place in their business, right? There's no wrong way to do business. It's your business. Any way that you do it or you think that is the best way is the best way because it's your business. No business should look just like the other business because everybody's in a different area, different niche, different anything. So you have to find what works for you and tailor it to that. So there is no wrong answers to this. None of these have to be your next big moves. These are just really, really big moves in general. And um, I dig them. These are probably some of the most uh, uh, headache <laughs> headache causing uh, moves that you could possibly make, but they're awesome. Each of these is going to increase business, is going to help you kind of move your empire closer to the sun. And it's just one of those things. Now, if you're a sole owner operator, you're happy exactly where you are. That's awesome. I still hope you hang around um, and maybe you'll get something out of this and think about maybe doing some of this in the future, but you don't have to. This is not necessarily for you. Um, either way, 
this is the top five, in my opinion. And just to jump into it, number five, I guess, I didn't number them, but backwards, is uh, adding a new service or equipment. Now, even if you guys are owner-operators, right, you don't have employees, you're never going to have employees, you can still strengthen a company. And I wanted to do new equipment because it's a big jump for people to get into water fed who have never been in water fed, but I'm a sales rep. So I don't want to be like all super salesy if anybody, uh, the thousands of you out there, hundreds and hundreds of you that have uh, dealt with me know that I kind of try my really hardest not to be salesy. That's not who I am. But that's part of it. So I said new service and new equipment, so kind of let's dive into that one for a second. Now, if you don't do pressure washing and you're a window cleaner, maybe it's time to try to take the leap into pressure washing. Same thing goes if you're a pressure washer and you don't do window cleaning. Maybe it's time to do that. Now, it could be gutter cleaning, uh, could be roof cleaning, concrete cleaning, it could be any of the add-ons, screen cleaning, right? We don't wanna get too far away from our main core, Okay, you don't want to be a jack of all trades and a master of none. So uh, no offense to you guys out there who are doing painting, but uh, if you're a pressure washer and a painter, you got to be a painter that happens to pressure wash before their jobs, right? It's very hard to be two totally different things because if you're cleaning concrete or doing a house wash and vinyl siding, you're not going to paint anything. There, there is no piggyback for that. You know, but when you're doing gutters, gutter cleaning, but you're a window cleaner, if you got ladders on the truck, they go, hey, could you do the gutters while you're there? It's a simple, super awesome add-on. And the main part about adding on services is that you can add on to your ticket. So if you have your average ticket, say is $249, say you add on services that may average out to an extra $100 a ticket. Would you dig having an extra $100? Yeah, you would. And they're going to hire somebody else anyway. And the problem is, I always try to make this, guys, especially pressure washers getting in, they'll go water fed right away, right? And I and they're kind of like, ah, oh, on the fence, I don't know if I even want to get in that service. It's not even for the fact that you're going to advertise window cleaning, which you certainly could. But what the fact is, is that you're offering a service that for the most part, the other people will offer your service. So here's what I'm trying to say. If you go to Jane Doe's house, and you're there to do the house wash, she goes, oh, could you do the window cleaning too? Sorry, we don't do window cleaning. She's gonna find a window cleaning company and say, hey, I have a pressure washer coming to do the house wash on Tuesday and I wanna get the windows done. They go, oh, really? Well, just to let you know, we do house washing and window cleaning. We can do both of them scheduled at the same time. You know, save you a couple bucks and you're using one contractor. What sounds better to a homeowner? Multiple people coming in multiple times, multiple checks, trying to coordinate it all together, no. What they want is to have everything right there and done for them. So you may actually lose pressure washing work by just not offering window cleaning. So it's something to think about. Adding services in general is uh, huge in my opinion. The other thing if with that, when I say equipment, is by making things uh, better for you, smoother for you, all that. Listen, sales spiel, warning, warning, warning. Listen with a grain of salt because, again, You guys know I'm a sales rep. That's how I make my cheddar, right? But let's listen. Let's talk about kind of the new services in equipment. Say you're doing um, screen washing now and it sucks. You're you're using, you know, your strip washer, a towel. You're trying to make it happen. They turn out pretty crappy. You charge a buck. Nobody cares. What about going over to a screen cleaner, right? Screen cleaners are super, super rad. Ask anybody who has one. I'm not using it on a uh, five window little old lady house, right? But for everything else, I'm gonna put it right up front. I'm gonna do it and people are gonna stop their car 90%, maybe not 90, we'll say 75% of the time, more than you could think, will stop their car and be like, what are you doing? Are you screen cleaning? Yeah, yeah. you're selling work that way, but now you're charging $3 for screens. You know, you can charge even more than that for a screen cleaning because you use a system. You use an actual system to clean them. It's uh, different when you're upselling that and say, hey, we'd love to do your screens too. "Ah, I don't think I need that. Okay, well, just to let you know, we have a special machine that only cleans screens. It's absolutely thorough. It's the most thorough window uh, screen cleaning that you can actually get. Uh, It's it's awesome. Really? Yeah, yeah, you don't have to do it. You know, pick out a couple screens. You know, this is what we charge. It's a super great upsell, but equipment costs. You're talking $369, not terrible, right? 
But from there, now you can go into buying a pressure washing starter kit if you're a window cleaner. Now you're at like $25, $26, $2,800, right? That's for surface cleaner to clean concrete, everything, extra to be able to spray on. Now you're into a whole new service. But house washing starts at like 250 bucks a house. You know, again, depending on where you are, uh, Wisconsin, we're at like $399 for a minimum. It takes you not a lot of time to pay that stuff back. And then from there, it's just all profits. It's just all adding to your services. Something to think about. And if you're going into WaterFed, WaterFed is absolutely my favorite tool that's come out in window cleaning forever. I mean, if there was no WaterFed, I don't know that I would uh, want to be a window cleaner. You can't use it for everything, I know. But WaterFed is so easy for everything else. When you're doing exterior 20 window houses in 20 minutes, you know, set up, tear down, 20 minutes, you're in and out. Crazy. Adding an extra, uh, what we do, pressure washing and siding. When we're doing house wash, we'll add window cleaning to that after the fact. Uh, we'll do it at the same time, add 99 bucks for 20 windows or less. I know that price is not great if you're just cleaning them right off the bat, but you're actually cleaning most of the stuff off the windows with the house wash, and you're just detailing them super fast. Again, you're in and out of there. You're adding an extra $99 to every ticket. It's hugely something to think about. And if you guys got any more questions, I'm not going to talk more about it, but just hit me up. You know my email, jersey at windowcleaner.com, or call me, text me, 862-312-2026. Okay, Cheryl Spiele, done. I love new equipment. Uh, stack ladders is another one. I, I won't get into it. I'm sorry. I said I was done. But it call me if you have questions. Anyway, next one, number four. No more salesy stuff, the rest of this one. But it's adding a new tech, right? Adding a new window cleaner or a new pressure washer, the person themselves, we call them techs, that is a huge step. Now, if you don't have any employees and you're looking at adding your first helper, man, that's a huge step. That's a huge step. If that's the route that you're going, now you have to have your employee, you have to figure out how you're paying them, how to legally pay them, what are your state laws, um, You know, how much are you gonna actually pay on top of it. Don't pay them cash. You're going to screw yourself and you're not going to have a good time doing that. So find out legally how it is. It's not as bad as you think. Look at possibly hiring, uh, using a temp service or a payroll company to do the payroll. It's super easy. Costs you a little bit, but so, so, so worth it just to relieve that liability. But when you hire a new tech, here's kind of where your brain has to be. You have to understand that if you're doing 40 hours a week and you hire a tech or a helper, now you're both down to 20 hours. Now I know it doesn't work out perfect like that. He's gonna be slow, she's gonna be slow, whatever. But you have to understand now you're at 20 hours a piece. 20 hours a week, meh, that's all right for a helper, right? If you got a helper, but it's harder to do a full-time person. Now if you're doing 50 hours, 60 hours, okay. Now you're at 25 hours for two of you or 30 hours for two of you, you're getting better. but how long are you going to do 50 or 60 hours yourself before you need to do that? So it's this catch 22 of like, do we have the work for the new guy or do we get the guy and then get the work? But then if we don't have enough work to keep the guy, is he going to stick around? So here's the thing. If you are hiring a new tech and it's say your first one. Now, if you're adding it into crews, you can kind of split it up. You can pull it off four or five crews and now you got a room for another new guy, more room to get new work. But if you're doing this as your first guy or you're smaller, you need to sell the crud out of windows, pressure washing, everything. You need to hustle. You need to get your butt out there because now you have 20 hours a week. You need to do the other 20 hours and just selling and more than you ever have before because you need to get those people happy a happy employee will stay with you for a while. There's nothing worse than the guys trying to get through winter where things slow down and then all of a sudden they quit and now it's getting into busy season and you're just S-O-L. So you have to sell the heck out of it. So it's a catch-22, do your research, but hiring a new employee allows you to basically have more work, it allows you to sell more work, and get more stuff done. Maybe you pair a service which allows you to sell more with a new tech. Might be something to think about. But a new tech is huge. It gets you to that step. If any of you are on the border of having to hire your first helper, man, high five. Do your research. Don't panic too terribly much. Um, but that is a huge step. So congratulations in the first place. And like I said, if you're an owner-operator and you don't ever want a helper or a tech, 
high five to you, man. Every dollar you make is your dollar, right? So there's nothing on this that uh, talks bad about that for sure. Um, but the number three big move, and this could go anywhere on the list. This could go even higher, and I'll explain why. But it's hiring an office goddess. What does that mean? Why is that such a sexist term? Well, here's the thing. Women are just inherently better at office work, right? We know that. You know that. Everybody knows that. It's just they're more organized based where we're scatterbrained, right? And that's not 100%. There's some dudes out there who are super awesome in organization. I'm not one of them. But if you hire an office person, you have to understand that they're going to free you up from a lot of humdrum kind of monotonous stuff that makes you no money, right? If you're worried about uh, doing the payroll or counting envelopes or sending out thank you cards or uh, confirming reservations or answering the phone or all that stuff, it's taking you away from the stuff that adds value to the company, right? There's maintenance to a company and that's really what office work is. Listen, accounts payable, uh, you got um, bills that uh, pay, so accounts payable, accounts receivable. You have collections, you have, um, if you're doing EDDM programs, there's counting involved and stacking and flat rates and bringing stuff to the post office. All that stuff, it would be so nice for most of us. And it was, that was my favorite big move I ever made was getting an office person in there. Uh, her name is Jill and she was absolutely amazing. Amazing. You never know the um, uh, sigh of relief and just like the weight off your shoulders when you hire your first office person who just has office duties. The con to hiring an office person is a couple of them. The first one is you have to have a location to hire them because they're not going to come to your house. It's just not going to happen. You can't have an office person work from home for the most part because if they're opening your mail or they're uh, doing things, maybe you can have contacts, but it's very hard unless everything's web-based. There's a lot of stuff that they do right in house, especially if you're doing envelope stuffing and things for your next day. Uh, but like calls and stuff, they can do that from home. But you kind of need to have an office space, an office space or a shop or something. First kind of downfall. The second and biggest one is that an office goddess or god or whatever, right? The office person is not going to make you $1. In essence, they're not going to actually make you any money. Now, if you can find somebody who is amazing on the phone and it can upsell anything, awesome. Because that person's going to, they're going to make their own wealth and they're going to pay for their own position. But they're not actually producing any money for you. That's the hard part. Is that if you're making, say out of the business, you're pulling yourself $50,000 out of the business, right? For even numbers, you don't need to tell me you make more or less, right? But say you're making that. And all of a sudden, you're bringing in a new person who maybe they're part time. They're only going to make twenty five thousand. Where do you think that twenty five thousand comes from? Now, when you hire a tech, the tech's doing work. The tech you can hire all the techs you want if they're happy working one or two hours, and it's not going to cost you any extra because they're doing work. They're bringing you in sixty five an hour, and you're paying them fifteen twenty an hour, whatever it is, right? But with office people, that funds, the money, their payroll has to come from somewhere and it's going to come from you. So you're going to be paying to have less headaches. You have to be uh, more comfortable, right, to be able to pay that because they will work year round even when you're not making billions of dollars uh, a month like you are in the spring and fall. So you have to keep that in mind. But man, does it free up so much awesomeness, awesomeness. But you have to be, you have to be ready for that. You have to float their payroll. You have to understand that whatever they're getting paid a year, you need to have set aside regardless of what else happens. They're going to be taking that money. So you really have to be ready for that. If it's your first time getting somebody in the office and you don't think you're ready, do not make that jump. It is very expensive. And there's kind of a blood, sweat, and earning it kind of thing that you have to do. And that's where these guys, when you talk to them, they're in the peak, ready to, to, to get somebody else. They're doing payroll and they're doing the advertising and they're calling and they're doing the estimates and they're doing the this and they're doing the that. You know, it's like pulling yourself out of the office to do that stuff. But now you're the most valuable person in your company and you're doing the lowest valued stuff. It has to get done 
but you have to decide for you when it's time and make sure that you're ready because if you do that the wrong time, it's not good. But anyway, that is number three is adding an office person. Um, the number two biggest move is, and I'm going to explain again what it is, why I want to say this, but it's adding a new truck or a new van or whatever you're using. Now, a lot of you are like, oh, that's cool. I just bought two trucks this year. Yeah, that's, I understand a new vehicle, but adding another one. So say you're running two, you're running two, you're running two. Now you're running the third one. That's the big part, right? That's the big part when you um, then are able to have a truck that sits there and is not making you money because you don't have the work for it, even more than staff, because you're gonna have to get the staff in that truck to make that truck work. Sometimes it's almost beneficial to have an extra truck when you get a really good deal on something, have it sit there because it's going to be screaming at you. Every minute of every day you look at it and it's not making you any money, just sitting there. You're making payments, you're paying insurance, right? You're getting it wrapped. If you get another truck, you have to get the work to pay for that truck. That's the big one. When you have an employee, they'll leave you and you won't have to pay them because you didn't have the work for them. With a truck, there's payments. There's stuff that goes with that truck that you're going to just bleed until you can fill that truck. Now, with a new truck means you need to have, in theory, the perfect case scenario would be another 40 hours you could throw to that one truck and whatever crew is going to be in there. But that's not how it happens. So now you have to split everything up. Having that truck is like the kind of pressure to fill the truck with work. That's a big one. Um, the other benefits to having another vehicle, or again, if you're an owner operator and you're going into your first, uh, your, your first crew, if you will, is that everything that truck does has to pay for itself. So if you have a $300 payment every month, you got a hundred dollars insurance. We'll say you're going the right way with commercial insurance. If you're doing all that, you got $400 not to include uh, getting it wrapped, not to include uh, gas for it and uh, you know wear and tear on the truck that you need to set money aside for new tires and oil changes and everything else. It's expensive. Like that new truck has to already has to produce a thousand a month when everything's said and done, right? These are ballpark numbers I know. Do your math on your particular vehicle or your particular anything and see where you're coming in, but say it has to do $1,000. That means when you get employees in that truck, say they're new techs, say you're splitting up techs, whatever you're doing, that truck needs to make $1,000 just to be in existence. If that truck sits there for a month and it's not going out because you don't have the work for it, it's very good uh, motivator when you have a truck just sitting there. Um, so there's pros and cons to that. Having a truck will instantly take money out of your pocket because even if you have a crew in there making more money, it's taking a thousand dollars of that money. So there is a point of that, but when you're doing growth, you can only have one crew do so much. You can only do so much yourself. You have 40, 50 hours if you really decide to hate life may even be more, but there's only so much you can do and your growth stops. Adding new trucks adds growth potential, right? It's like uh, server space or something, you know, where if you're trying to fill up a, a server, you got to buy the racks before you have, need the server so that you can s grow into it, right? It's the same concept with new trucks. You have to be ready, but you have to understand that trucks cost money. Catch 22, only you know when it's time to make that decision because it's your business, right? But it's getting a new truck. This ties to number one. This is the number one biggest move for your company, the direction of your company, it is a giant, giant succubus. It will cost you so much more money than you think. Um, you have to 100% be ready. If you push this, um, if you go back and watch the episode I did on how I almost destroyed my business, that was the reason why. But it opens up more doors of potential than anything else you could possibly do. And it's getting a shop. Now, some of you have offices, just like a rented office, right? You park the truck uh, in the front and that's where maybe an office staff and you have your offices. Cool, totally fine. 
it's limiting because you can't do screens, you know, in this office possibly. Maybe you can't really do any work. You can't pull a truck and that type of thing. But if you get a shop and an office, you have a place to park the trucks, do maintenance, wash the trucks, whatever. Now you have like a headquarters, a place to be. The biggest deal for this is not only is it opening up huge, huge potential, right? We had a drive-in shop, um, nothing big. It was like, it's 3,500 square feet, something like that. But it's got a second floor, a bunch of offices, blah, blah, blah. So, but you could drive a vehicle in. What this does is it allows us to do plowing and have a place for the plows. It has trailers. We can store trailers in there. We have uh, 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 pallet shelving and a uh, fork truck and everything to put stuff up. And it opens up so many doors, not to mention the staffing. We have... Our salesman is in the office. There he's got his own office. Our office staff has an office. I have an office. Our operations officer technically has an office. Like all of that comes with having a location. But now all of a sudden, where you were working from home before, so you already got internet, you already got heat, you got electric, it's already there. You're just using it, right? It actually makes what you had now be a deduction. Now you have to ha have... You have to have internet, it's another internet. So not only are you not getting the de deduction for the home office, you're now paying more. You have to have a dumpster service if you don't have garbage. You have to pay your heat, your electric. A lot of these places, especially if you're doing shops, cost a lot of money to heat, a lot of money, uh, depending on what area you're in of the country, of course. If you're in a hot area, they cost a lot of money to cool, right? Um, now you have to have Things you don't even think about, like extra toilet paper, right? Soap, towels. You got to think about all the things to furnish this place, the furniture that goes into it, the paint and remodel, the, you know, everything that goes into it. They're very, very expensive. You have to be ready, um, but it opens up the doors. Now you can have those office staff have a place to go. Guess what? Now when you do interviews, they can come to your place of business as opposed to your uh, house. Nothing better than having a, a, an office set up just for interviews where you have a table and everything set up and people come and meet you at the time if they actually show up. You walk them in, you talk about it, you show them the place, you show them your equipment and trucks, you're selling yourself to them. It turns things way around. But again, it's super expensive, and I know you guys are super smart, but take my word for it, it's super expensive. Go back and listen to the episode on how I almost destroyed my business. That's because I got a shop too quick. It's absolutely amazing. I'm so glad that I did. Now, <laughs> because I'm not pulling my hair out like I did then. So, But you have to be ready. It's uh, much more expensive than you think. But those are the top five. If you think I missed anything, please go to YouTube. Uh, the video will be on there. Um, I'm sorry you have to look at me, but put it in the background. You won't have to look. You can just listen. Uh, but um, that's where we have our conversation. So you can go there, talk, comment, all that stuff. And please do. It is nothing better than when you guys go ahead and give me that thumbs up on that video and comment. It just The interaction is amazing. So uh, definitely do that. And the plea to you to let me be your rep is here again. Um, my number directs 862-312-2026. Save that number right now. Save it. Go ahead. If you don't remember it, go to YouTube. It's on the bottom of the screen. If you are on YouTube, there's my number. There's my email. It's all right there. Um, let me be your rep. Everything. I put in $40 orders. $43 order I put in yesterday. I'm so happy that guy let me put that order in. Like That's the stuff. The loyalty you guys have um, to always ordering through me is absolutely epic. Uh, I never would have thought that you guys were this loyal. It's super awesome. So thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm really, really, really appreciative of it. So, But either way, thanks to everybody who does uh, buy through me. Go change your business. Um, always be growing. Go to the huge convention. It's coming up. Go to thehugeconvention.com. Buy the tickets. I'm done with all my shields today. But uh, until next week, go out there and be epic.